Now we want to look at sentence patterns. One of the things you want to remember when you're writing is you want what you write to be enjoyable for the reader. Uh, you don't want the reader to have a hard time figuring out what you're trying to say. Um, and you don't want the reader to be bored. And one of the ways to keep the reader from being bored is to use a variety of sentence patterns. Uh, so, to keep your writing interesting. And so, when you're writing, um, if all you have is a whole bunch of little bitty short simple sentences, what happens is the reader's going to find that really tedious. Um, it's kind of like riding in a car with a teenager who's just learning to drive and you're going rrr, 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 rrr. and it's extremely annoying so you want to avoid having just pile on pile on uh, lots and lots of little bitty sentences on the other hand if you use lots of extremely long compound complex sentences um, and so uh, things like that the reader may get a little bit confused or may even fall asleep so you want to avoid both extremes. You want to use a variety of sentence patterns so that the reader doesn't go to sleep and so the reader is not annoyed. Now, you can also use sentence patterns as a way of emphasizing things. For example, maybe you have a lot of long, flowing, smooth, compound, complex sentences, and then you want to emphasize something, and you just hit them, bam, with a short, simple sentence. And what happens when you do that? You've got a nice, relaxed reader reading along, and then wham, there's that short, simple sentence. The reader sits up and says, whoa, that's an important point. So you can use sentence patterns to show what you want the reader to pay the most attention to. So in order to vary the sentence patterns, we want to look and see what are the basic sentence patterns. And we'll start by looking at What's the basic building block of a sentence? Um, it's something known as a clause. And a clause basically is something that has a subject and a complete verb. So back when we were looking at finding the subject and verb, what you were doing was looking for these two components that make up a clause. Now, there are two different kinds of clauses we look at. We have an independent clause. That's one that can stand by itself as a complete sentence. So that's one kind of clause. The other kind of clause we have is a dependent clause. That's one that contains dependent words. So it can't stand by itself. So when we're looking at that, uh, dependent words, uh, there are two categories of them. The technical terms are uh, uh, relative pronouns and uh, subordinate conjunctions. But you don't need to memorize the term. Dependent words are things like if or while or because or those sorts of things. If you have one of those words in your clause, that clause can't stand by itself. These words basically say this clause is not uh, strong enough to stand by itself. It has to be connected to something else. Now, when we're looking at sentence patterns, we are looking at uh, the formulas 
that go into a sentence. So we have the simple sentence. That's going to be simply one independent clause. That's it. So the simple sentence, that's the short one. Uh, we have the compound sentence. That's going to be two or more independent clauses. So uh, that's one where you may have a semicolon connecting the two, or you may have a comma plus one of the fanboys. That's stuff we looked at when we were looking at uh, fixing run-on sentences. One of the ways to do it was to make it into a compound using the semicolon or the comma plus the fanboys. Then we have the complex sentence. That's a sentence that has one independent clause plus at least one dependent clause. So notice it's at least one dependent clause. There could be more than one dependent clause, but if it has only one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses, that's complex. Then we have compound complex. That one is going to be two or more independent clauses plus at least one dependent clause. So the compound complex, you can have any number of clauses strung together. And if two or more of them are independent, and at least one of them is dependent, you've got compound complex. So when you're looking at your own writing, what you want to do is see what are the sentence structures you're using. Are you using all the same, or do you have multiple different structures that can vary and that can make the reading interesting 